Barakate Yahweh, Barakate Yahweh Shai, Barakate Yahweh, Barakate Yahweh Shai, Barakate Yahweh, Barakate Yahweh Shai. I want to say all praises, honor, and glory be to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai. That's the Heavenly Father's name in the ancient Hebrew and his son's name in the ancient Hebrew tongue. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Shai is the name of his only begotten son. I want to say double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone who taught us this word. Um, I want to say uh, shalom, you know, to all the sincere brethren out there. Uh, my name is Ibad Allah. I'm just going to go through a, a few scriptures, you know, dealing with how basically uh, the church or the elect is going through trials, tribulations, and um, we're in, you know, in the furnace of affliction while we do this labor and this work. All right. So the first scripture I'm going to get is John 17, verse 4. It says, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Now, these are the words of, of uh, if you have a um, King James Bible, these these words will be in red letters sim symbolizing these are the words of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. All right. So this is him speaking. He said he glorified the heavenly father, the most high Yahweh on the earth. You know, when he came during his ministry he was glorifying and um, glorifying his heavenly father paving the way for the kingdom paving the road for the kingdom all right he says i have finished the work right because this was when he said this this was about the time where he was to be crucified you know when he gave up his life you know for the elect of israel you know for the israelites so he he said i have finished the work which thou gavest me to do and now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. All right. Meaning that he went back to the spiritual world. You know, he's sitting on the right hand of the heavenly father right now, pursuant to Psalms 110 in the first verse on down. All right. So it says, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me. All right, so that proves that 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 name in the ancient Hebrew, the Lashawan Kodash, or the Holy Tongue, is, is very very important. You got guys like Nate, you know, I U I C, claiming that the name doesn't matter. They're calling calling on Christ. Christ is not his name. You know, Christ is a Greek word which simply means anointed. All right, his name was not Christ. His name was Yahweh Shai. You know. Yahweh Shai, meaning he is the deliverer, or he is the savior. And he's only the savior and deliverer of the nation of Israel. So it's at verse 6. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. The men which the Most High gave to Yahweh Shai are the elect, the elect of Israel. Okay? Not even all of Israel right now. Only the elect. Because two-thirds, pursuant to Zechariah 13, 13th chapter, two two thirds of Israel are going to be destroyed on, for for their rebellion rebelliousness, you know, for their stiff neck, being stiff neck, being hard headed, you know, and, and wanting to do their own thing, and not taking heed to the to the the word of the Lord, which the Lord has His prophets out here on the highways and the byways, and on the, on the internet, you know, pushing this word out, you know, but two thirds reject reject this word reject the word of the heavenly father all right so it says i have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world he said thine they were and thou gavest them me and they have kept thy word so the elect of israel the one third and the elect you know elect prophets the hundred forty four thousand they're going to keep the word of the heavenly father you know they're going to do the things that are pleasing to him they're going to keep his laws, his statutes, his commandments, keep his Sabbaths, keep his high holy days. And they're going to do, not do the things that, that anger the Lord, you know, which means breaking his commandments, you know. So it says, uh, verse 7, it says, Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of, are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them. And have known surely that I came out from thee. See, the elect of the Lord, they're going to receive this word. They're going to take it with joy. 
and they're gonna uh, apply it and apply it to their life. It says, um, and they have believed that thou didn't send me. It says, I, verse nine, I pray for them, I pray not for the world. All right, so Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, he, he didn't pray for the whole world. He didn't even pray for all of Israel because the world there is dealing with, with all of Israel, you know? It's not dealing. It's not even dealing with the other nations. It's not the other nations have no uh, have no part in this. All right, the other nations are heathens. They're 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 outside of the temple of the heavenly Father. The Lord doesn't deal with them. He only deals with His people. You know the Israelites. But even right now, He's only dealing with a certain number of His of His people, which is the elect, the one third. So it says, "I pray for them. I pray not for the world." So he prayed for the elect's sake. He didn't pray even for two thirds of Israel. Just like in ancient Egypt, you know, the Lord delivered um, delivered the elect out of out of Egypt, but the, the the rest of the Israelites, the rebellious Israelites, they perished and wandered in the desert. The Lord didn't even suffer them to enter into the holy land. All right, and it's going to be the same thing now. And this time, they gotta they gotta die first. And then in the kingdom, they'll be born back as little children up in, and raised up in righteousness. So it says, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And all mine are thine, and they are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. Like, like what I said, the, the Lord, he's sitting on the right hand of the, of the Heavenly Father right now. He's in the spirit. He's not in the flesh right now. So he's not in the world. He said, but the elect, they are in the world. They're Meaning they're in this flesh. And they're going through different trials and tribulations, you know, and, this, uh, and suffering for this for this truth. Suffering for the name of Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh All right? You know, having scoffers um, slander you and talk shit about you. You know, falsely for for the for the Lord's name's sake, as the scriptures say. It says, and now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me. Yeah, and that's why Nate hates that name. You know, because Nate is Satan. Nate is the devil. You know. He's the he's the he's an antichrist. He's one of one of many. You know that's why he hates that name. He he hates he hates the name of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Even in that other in one video, he was like, "Stop saying that name! Stop saying that name!" You know, because he, you know, he hates that name. All right, it says, "Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me." That they may be one as we are one, you know. So the Lord is saying that they may be one, as, even as Him and the, uh, the Heavenly Father, and He is one, meaning being in one accord. You know, that's why we all got to teach the same thing. We got to be one body. You know, that's why the, the apostles of, of Great Millstone, you know, starting with Apostle Tahar on down, we always stress that you can't come with no outside outside doctrines man we all have to be one body and teach the same thing you know you can't come with uh some new uh doctrine that's not scriptural you know like saying uh, all of esau is not going to be destroyed when the scriptures clearly say that you know in the book of obadiah you know it says how after a thousand years after they served slavery for a thousand years all of esau is going to be done away with you know, they're going to be burnt up. You know, you, you got guys out there coming up with their own vain philosophy and doctrine, you know, and pushing it. Like like uh, another example, Nate Satan saying that you can't you can't talk about Esau. You can't get on the white man. And he said he said that uh, if he finds out that there's any uh, camps in IUIC that's that uh, if he sees any videos or he hears about it, he's gonna he's gonna um he's gonna um basically um take that camp out. You know he's gonna shut it down. But who are you gonna listen to, man? 
You know, you guys that's that's underneath that spell of IUIC better wake the hell up because the time is short. Are you, who who are you going to trust in? Who are you going to believe in? You're going to believe in man or you're going to believe in the Heavenly Father? You're going to believe in, in the word, the word of the Heavenly Father or are you going to believe in a doctrine of man? You know, how are we not supposed to talk about Esau? You know, the devil. That's one of the, the first priests, uh, first things that you you do when you uh, you learn when you come when you when you uh, become awakened enlightened you know knowing who your your main enemy is you know we have uh, the Israelites all the other nations are the Israelites enemies but who's the main enemy right now who's the main demon that's in power right now the so-called white man Esau or Edom you know and he's saying that you can't talk against him because he sold out he sold out to the so-called white man, you know, by taking that 501c3 charter, that tax-exempt status as a, as a church. And once you do that, they can tell you what you can teach and what you can't teach. And if you violate that, they would just simply take away that tax-exempt status that they gave you, you know. It's being manifested who, who the true men of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai are. All right. So um, it says, while I was with them, uh, this is ver John 17, verse 12. It says, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name that thou gave that those that thou gavest me have I kept. And none of them is lost, but the son of perdition. So not if, if anybody, not, none of the elect are going to are going to be swayed by other doctrines, you know. Or other tradition traditions of men they're not going to lose faith you know they're not going to get um uh, disenchanted they're going to keep they're going to endure until the end you know none of the elect it, it, it shall be lost you know they're going to stay on the straight and narrow path you know enter like it says in matthews enter ye in at the straight gate no matter what comes upon them what trials what tribulations what sufferings what slanders you know what whatever things are said against them or about them is not going to deter them it says and none of them is lost but the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled all right and the, and the, the main son of perdition when you read back then was judah judas iscariot but you have uh guys that come into the truth which they uh fulfill that lot of judas iscariot also they come in you know they come in just so they can be judged. All right. They do whatever wickedness that they are that, you know, and then the Heavenly Father has has right to judge them, you know, and they're they're just uh, waiting for their for their their destruction. All right. Uh, verse 13. And now come I to thee and these things I speak in the world that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Verse 14, I have given them thy word and the world hath hated them because they are not of the world. So the true men of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, they're going to be hated by the world. They're going to be hated by the, the, the other nations. They're going to be hated by Esau. They're going to be hated by even two thirds of Israel. The elect, the elect are going to be hated by two thirds of Israel. All right. Because it's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual thing because the scriptures say the servant is not greater than his Lord. So two thousand over two thousand years ago, when the Lord was on the earth, who was who was uh, the main ones that said to crucify him? It were, there were other Israelites, wicked as Israelites, from from all the all the tribes. You know, they said crucify him, crucify him, and let his blood be upon us and our children. Okay which they don't even know, they put a curse on themselves, you know, you know, they condemn themselves back then, and those same people, those same spirits are here now on the earth, ready to be judged once again, all right, so it says, um, so uh, it says, I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world, you know, so the elect men of, of Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, we're not supposed to be of this world, man. We're supposed to be 
uh, separate from this world. It says, I pray not that thou shouldest take, this is the point right here I wanted to get to. Uh, it says, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. All right? Meaning that, you know, keep us keep us on the straight and narrow path. You know? It says, they, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy world is thy word is truth. You know? The word sanctify means to make clean, you know. What makes us uh clean, what cleanses us is this word, these scriptures, you know, the Bible, you know, this truth that has been passed down unto us, you know, that's what that is what makes us clean. You know, we're not clean of ourselves. Okay. It says, um, and for their sakes, I sanctify myself. Okay, I think that's the point. All right, that's the point on that. Let me see. Let um, me see. I'm gonna go from there. Um, let me go to Luke. No, let me go. I'm gonna go to the um, to the Apocrypha, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiasticus, chapter two. We start at verse one. It says, "My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul." For temptation, right? You know, when you come into this thing, you have to count the cost, man. You know, you have to count the cost to see whether, if you know, if you built for this thing, you know, like it says in the book of Luke, you know, like it says in the book of Luke. So it says, um, prepare thy soul for temptation because you're going to go through all kinds of trials, all kinds of tribulations, all kinds of sufferings. For the name of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh It says, "Set thy heart aright and constantly endure." I mean, set your heart aright. Meaning, set your mind aright. You know, the word heart is from the Hebrew word lav, which means your mind. You know, set your mind aright. You know I mean, make your mind strong and constantly endure. You know, constantly endure. I mean, continually make make hard. You know, the word endure means means make, to make yourself. Hard, you know, hardened against this, whatever, whatever comes against you. And make not haste in time of trouble. Right. Make not haste, meaning we have to be focused, be sober minded in this truth. You know, make sure that we're we're doing what the Lord require, requires of us. It says, cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. So now is the time for us to cleave unto the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh You know, now is the time for us to cleave. You know, the, the word cleave means to strongly grab hold on to. You know, hold on to very tightly. Okay? You know, like the scriptures say, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found, while the evil days come not. Because the time that's approaching, you know, are evil days uh, approaching. You know, the time of martial law. The time of the police state, the time of the mark of the beast, which is the RFID microchip being being mandated, you know, being made mandatory, you know, which they're going to do away with, with cash. They're going to do away with checks. They're going to do away with credit cards. And then everything's going to be on that chip, that little chip about the size of a grain of rice, which that is the mark of the beast. And if you and if anyone takes that that chip. The Lord is going to destroy you. So the time are coming that we have to rely on faith. We have to live by faith. Okay? Because the scripture said that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark. So you got to trust in the Lord in that day. You know, how are you going to eat? How are you going to get something to drink? You know? How are you going to survive? With that, if, you know, all of those things you have to trust in the Lord. You have to have faith. So now is the time to, to build up your faith, to learn about the Lord, you know, and 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 cleave unto him, as the scripture said. So it says, cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou mightest, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. You know? So that that's what we're seeking for, to be increased at our last end. You know, so that, that when the Lord comes, he can find us worthy find us worthy and deliver and deliver us and that we may receive salvation in the kingdom okay it says whatsoever is brought upon thee take cheerfully 
Right. What? Well, no matter what it is, you might lose your job. You might get evicted. You know what I'm saying? You might not have a place to a certain place to stay. Uh, your your wife might leave, uh, threaten to leave you, and 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 take your children. You know, unless you, unless you uh, you know, you leave this truth. She might give you an ultimatum. So many kind of things. You know, you might have uh, ailments or infirmities. You know, so what whatever is brought upon us, we, you know, we're, we're to take cheerfully, man. You know, knowing that you know that's just for the trial of our faith. Our faith is being tested and tried. All right, and the Lord is, is is testing you to see if you're gonna trust in Him, or are you gonna fold up? Are you gonna bitch up and fold up? So it says, "Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully, and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state." That's the key to be patient. You know, you trust in the Lord, you pray to the Lord on whatever situation you go into, you ask Him for for help. And you be patient, and You wait for him to deliver you. You know, the Lord said, uh, uh, "Anything that you that you 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 lack, ask of him. Ask, and ye shall receive." So the the Lord already knows everything that we need. He knows he knows everything that we're going through. Yeah, but he just wants to test test us, see if we're gonna trust in him or not. So it says, and be patient when thou art changed to a lower lowest state. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. See, that's what we want to be. We want to be found to be gold. Like that fine gold. Fine gold of you fast. Alright? The gold represents someone that's been tried, been tested, and they they trust in the Lord all the way until the end. Alright? Because like in, in the book of, uh, I believe it's 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, it talks about um, about men being different levels of men. Talking about gold, silver, precious uh, stones. And then it, it goes into um, hay, wood, and stubble. You know, you don't want to be part of that hay, wood, or, wood or stubble. You know, because all of those things burn once fire is, is put on them. All right. Like I say, for I start at the top from gold. If you put fire on gold, you know, it might bend or whatever, but it, it can take it. Same thing with silver. Same thing with precious, precious stones. But if you if you put fire to wood, or fire to hay or to stubble, it burns up. You know, stubble burns quick, super quick. As soon as a little hell is put on it, woof, it's gone. You know, hay the same. You know, it lasts a, a tiny bit longer. Wood, it might endure for a little while, but eventually it's consumed by the fire. So we don't want to be that wood, that hay, or that stubble. We want to be that gold and that silver and that precious, you know, pre them precious stones that can deal with the, that fire. The fire is those trials and tribulations that you go through on a daily basis, and it's true. We want to be able to, to endure, be able to endure that. So it says, for gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. It says, believe in him and he will help thee. Right? So believe in Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai and trust in him. It says, order thy way aright and trust in him. Ye that fear the Lord, Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, wait for his mercy. Right? Because at, at the end of everything, the Lord is in control of, of all things. So... So at the end of it, he's gonna make a way for you to to get through. You know, look at look at the 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 prophets of old. You know, look at uh, for example the the apostle Paul. You know, they went through trials and tribulations. They were they were on the ship. You know, in the raging seas, in the middle of a, a vicious storm. You know, did they did they lose faith? No. You know, they they trusted in the Lord, and the Lord assured Paul. And the rest of the men that were on the ship, that no one would lose their life, not one person would lose their life, you know. So they, you know, they trusted all the way, in, even in the face of death, you know. They trusted until the end. So it says, "Are ye that fear the Lord, wait for His mercy, and go not aside, lest ye fall." All right, go not aside. Don't lean onto your own understanding, or you know, go back into the world, you know. 
or, or if, if you do that, you're going to you're going to fall. All right. It says, ye that fear the Lord, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, believe him and your reward shall not fail. All right. Your re if we trust in him and believe in him and endure until the end, our reward shall not fail. All right. It says, um, ye that fear the Lord, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, hope for good and for everlasting joy and mercy. It says, look at the generations of old and see, did ever any trust in the Lord? and was confounded and the answer is no all the ancient prophets and apostles from the ancient world that trusted in the Lord they were never confounded you know look at the prophets like Jeremiah Ezekiel Daniel oh Daniel Daniel was in in the fiery furnace man even in in, in the face face of that you know they still trusted you know trusted in the Lord all right, and the Lord delivered them. Okay, it says, Look at the generations of old and see, did ever any trust in the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, and was confounded, or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken, or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? And the answer is no one. You know, if you call out upon him in, in truth and sincerity, he's not going to despise you, he's going to help you. For the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, is full of compassion and mercy, long suffering and very pitiful, and forgiveth sin. All right? And, and saveth in time of affliction. So the Lord can forgive your sins. You know, don't let your sins weigh you down, you know? Because we're, we're all in this flesh. We're all, you know, we're, we're not right. That's why we need a Savior. That's why we need a Savior. That's why we need Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. So we can't let our sins weigh us down or we can't condemn ourselves in our own heart, uh, you know, for, for going off. All we can do is repent and ask the Lord for forgiveness, you know, and keep on moving. The scriptures say a righteous man falleth seven times and get it back up. All right. The word seven means a completion, a complete number of times that righteous men go off. But they always repent and get back up and pray to the Lord for mercy and still trust in them. So we can't let our sins weigh us down and we can't let our iniquities lift themselves up. So you can't be, you know, over, you know, overly wicked, you know. You got to check yourself too. You got to examine yourself whether you be in the faith or not. So it's a balance, it's a perfect balance. It says um it says and forgive forgiveth sins and saveth in the time of affliction. All right? Cuz the time times of affliction you know, the Lord will, will, will deliver you. It'll, it'll be your help. It says, Woe be to fearful hearts and faint hands, and the sinner that goeth two ways. Right, because you can't be double minded in this thing. You know, you can't have a you can't be half wishy washy and not believe in the Heavenly Father. Because the Heavenly Father will not help you. It says, Woe unto him that is faint hearted, for he believeth not. Therefore shall he not be defended. And that's self-explanatory. It says, Woe unto you that have lost patience. So the key is not to lose patience. You know? We can't lose our patience, man. Because our patience is what what, what uh, gives us hope. And our hope is what, you know, give, uh, gives us more, you know, strengthens our faith. And faith is what's going to help us endure until the end. All right? So it's, um, it says, uh, Woe unto you that have lost patience, and what will ye do when the Lord shall visit you? All right, what are you going to do when the Lord shall visit you? Here it is, you you totally lost patience, you, you totally went out back into the world, you know? And what, do you, what are you going to do when the Lord uh, pronounces judgment upon you? It says, They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word. All right? So the, the elect of Israel, they're going to do what the Lord said to do. They're not going to go to the right hand. They're not going to go to the left. They're going to they're going to do exactly what he said to do. That's to go out, you know, and feed the sheep. You know? Like the Lord told Peter said, "If you love me, feed my sheep, you know, feed my lambs." You know? How does he mean he didn't mean actual food. He mean with this word, with this truth, go out and teach the elect the elect of Israel. All right, that's how we're feeding. We're feeding, 
feeding the uh, the sheep by uh, going out on the highways and the byways, the different camps that you see all over the world, and on diff these different shows on the internet, these these different uh, pages on on the internet. All right. So it says, um, it said, they that fear the Lord will not disobey His word, and they that love Him will keep His ways. They that fear the Lord will seek that which is well pleasing unto him, and they that love him shall be filled with the law. It says they that fear the Lord will prepare their hearts and humble their souls in his sight. All right. So we got to prepare our hearts, prepare our mind, you know, whatever, you know, things that are going on in your mind. You got to you got to you know, you got to just got to trust in the Lord, you know, put away all those doubts. All that, that doubt and spirit, you know, like Thomas, like, you know, the disciple Thomas. We can't have that doubt in our spirit, man, because doubt, doubt is wickedness. Doubt is sin. Doubt is the opposite of faith. OK, so we can't we got to put all of that aside. All right. So they that fear the Lord will, will prepare their hearts and humble their souls in his sight. So you got to humble ourselves. We got to fast. We got to pray, whatever it is we have to do, man. We have to humble ourselves under the power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh And the Lord will always be with you if you do these things. Saying, we will fall into the hands of the Lord and not into the hands of men. For as his majesty is, so is his mercy. And with that, I want to say all praises be to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh I hope this was edifying to, you know, some brothers out there. And Lord willing, I'll see you on the next show. Shalom.